Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take Hello. a midweek break, and just talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. Hi, everyone. I'm Vin Stone. That is Jill Bryant and one Pedro Mateus. Everyone Hello. watching us live. Fair warning. Uh, we do try to have a good time on the show. There may be laughter, so if you're adverse to that, um, run away now while there's still time. Wasn't that? That was hilarious. Wasn't it, Pedro? <laughs> Your face is alert. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, is. it is. What have you been up to, man? How's the island holding up? Uh, it's uh, holding up and uh, being, you know, NHS person myself. I've uh, my job is just mostly, you know, supporting the people who are actually out there doing the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, that in still involves going into the office to uh, get a bunch of laptops ready and get a bunch of stuff packaged up to send to wherever the people happen to be. So that that that's been my life for the past month. Mm -hmm. Jill, anything new going on? <laughs> oh yeah, so I've been having actually a, a I. I'm often on Linux Unplugged at Jupiter Broadcasting on Tuesday, and uh, we decided to start an, a community um, discussion around that on Sundays with the Linux, we call it the LUP Lug, Linux un Unplug Lug. And that's been a ro lot of fun, and, and Chris and all the hosts came in, and it was just, it was really fun. It's it's like what we do here at LGC in the after shows, in. and um, so that was really nice to organize that and help with that, and... Wow, so I've been also enjoying playing some Serious Sam 2 with Proton and Ultra HD. So that's been fun. I'd never played that game because it wasn't available on Linux, but now we have Proton and Lutris. So now I can play it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I like riding dinosaurs. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so have we seen all the excitement? The OMG WTF BBQ with the RTX <laughs> audio app that removes background noise utilizing RTX cores, unless you change awesome. a little thing in the script and then just use the regular CUDA cores. You can even run it on 980. Um, yes, that is amazing advanced technology. And um, it it's just brilliant to see. And I'm kind of laughing because it's Windows only. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to show mm -hmm. you how we do the exact same thing we've been doing the exact same thing for years uh using an open source application an open source lv2 plugin this friday awesome i mm -hmm. saw that and i saw everyone um it's like this is a maze balls this is mm -hmm. great i can run a I'm like that's easy right? we have a, a ai plugin that can scan that and we use it on this show we're using it right now uh yeah stay tuned for that also i'm i'm rolling <clears throat> Mm. in amd monies uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild you actually got the check i got the check man <laughs> we were discussing before i was like what do i do with this just put it in the box put it in the wall i don't know if it really bother cash gets more than you would think man it was like 30 dollars it's like what wow <laughs> whatever shall i do with this newfound wealth <laughs> frame it <laughs> frame it or something man um yeah i didn't expect that so if you were included because I, I don't think you ever applied to be part of that class action lawsuit they just sent out mailers to everyone that bought a bulldozer um gave you a code and if you punch that and whenever that was maybe a year ago two years ago hey um mm. get ready you're, you're gonna have choices to try to spend your newfound wealth um <laughs> Then again, you might, there's probably been times in my life where $30 could have been a game changer. So I'm only half joking about that. Make yourself a oh, yeah. shows up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, we do have a couple of things to talk about this yeah. week, believe it or not, because Yay. there's a new, hot new version of Ubuntu about to roll out. And this is from its fossil. This is going to be in our show notes, but we're just wrapping about 2004, the new LTS. And they're rolling down tomorrow you know, all of the stuff that you need to know man a couple of neat things in this uh you're going to be getting kernel 5.4 so you're going to have that native fat support that's going to be a thing mm -hmm. they're going to get rid of amazon apps uh well the one thing that they had left it was basically amazon yeah, free they're... yeah <laughs> and this is also going to include wireguard to which i hear you but then kernel 5.4 does not have this wireguard they're going to backport it that's going to be a thing 
new things with themes and stuff like that, but I I, I don't mm -hmm. know about the theme, dark mode. I would use that, Pedro. Would you use that? Yeah. <laughs> that I am <laughs> using that on uh, KDE. <laughs> mm. Yes. <laughs> Jill. But the big I one seems to be, yeah, go ahead, Jill. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm using it right now on Ubuntu Mate as well. And yeah, you know, as we talked about a few weeks ago with the beta release of Ubuntu 2004, uh, GNOME 3.36 is a lot faster and much more polished. And as Ven was saying, there's a new dark mode setting with three variants that you saw there of the default. Yaru theme, light, dark, and standard. Fractional and what's really scaling. awesome. Hmm. Yay! And fractional mm -hmm. scaling. And the, the How many themes, years did that take? I oh, don't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And the, the themes are part of the settings application it didn't now. Work for my multiple monitor setup, though it showed hardware. <laughs> well, won't work. <laughs> I mean, it'll do it on all the monitors at uh -huh. once. <laughs> yeah, so the themes don't, ha you, you can. Uh, uh, change them in the settings application now. You don't have to install GNOME Tweaks, which I really wish uh, GNOME would follow suit with the GNOME Tweaks configuration and just include them in the UI by default. <laughs> that would be really nice. <laughs> and our big news for, for us gamers is it also includes the game mode performance tool from Feral Interactive. So that's really, really awesome. And no more 32-bit system support for Ubuntu 2004, as we've been talking about probably for the last year that was coming. <laughs> but what will I run in my retro battle station? I'll tell you what you're going to yeah. run on that. You're going to run a retro distribution, baby. <laughs> Debian. Um, <laughs> yeah. Snaps first. But, yeah, that, yeah, that's the big one, isn't it? It's yes. like, oh, yeah, no, we're totally going to be pushing out snaps. So if you're trying to run a package like, say, HTOP, that doesn't come installed by default. Come on, it's current year <laughs> argument. Just do it. Uh, but it goes, oh, you can install it by doing a sudo uh, snap install htop or sudo apt install um, htop. It's Why like, do you hate options, Pedro? It's, I don't hate <laughs> options. I just don't like snaps. <laughs> so uh, sudo apt auto remove dash dash purge snap d is uh, the way forward, nope. apparently. Nope. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're being silly. You're, you're, just, you're just being the contrarian person that you are. Um, this is I how am. you do it. You <laughs> you push it out there, just like Google Plus and Google did, because mm -hmm. that worked. I mean, mm -hmm. this Ter is this, this yeah. is advanced strengths. You're just not understanding the right way to, to go about it. <laughs> I mean, if they want people to hate it and you know just kill it outright, it, yeah. that'll do it. Yeah. Well, I understand where they're coming from because they mm -hmm. want people to like know what it is, know it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, oh man, I don't know. I don't know. You're just containerization on the desktop. Um, I'm still waiting for the, like, oh, wait, that's the one time that makes sense. Um, for a workstation, for a server, sure. For like, yeah. you know, dedicated work mm -hmm. machine, that's all it does. Fine. You need version control over every little bit of software that you have installed on it, and you need to be able to control the sandboxing and everything else that it's using. Okay. Mm -hmm. On my desktop PC, on my personal laptop, no. no. Stop pushing it, yeah. please. No, Pedro, you're just <laughs> old and you're set in your ways, man. This is what all the kids are doing, and we won't have any more of it. Hey, 2004, it's out there. Go test on it. Go hammer on it. Yeah. Go fire some bug mm -hmm. reports. It's awesome. And, um, see if you like it. It's always good for a new LTS, and it's been a minute, you know? That'll yeah. be out officially tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Uh, mm -hmm. But let's let's keep... Hey, you know what? You know what? Yay. I don't dislike this. Yay. Image. Me neither. <laughs> because if you're going to do containers that are useful for desktop users, app image is pretty nice. You just download it, you run it, and away you go. It's easy. Go figure. But uh, this is App Image Builder, which uh, version not 5.0 is currently out, and they are starting a 1.0 feature freeze and the use of static linked app run to speed up application startup, which also very, very nice. Also a big, big problem with snaps. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the way that um, App Image Builder works is that it 
basically just grabs whatever information from apt or DNF and creates a static package of whatever bit of software you're trying to create the app image of. And uh, it resolves all the dependencies and sets everything up. Neat. So that, that, that's all very well and good. What about uh, software that's not in the repos? Can you not like pull the uh, output mm -hmm. from LDD, find what provides those packages and set it up from there? Because I have a few, you know, bits of old software and old games that could benefit from that a great deal. I don't know. Uh, this <laughs> app images for me, 100% app images is what I don't want to make that. What I want to test the waters. This is exactly how it works with it. Like mm -hmm. I see this program, like, especially if I know I'm going to have to build it. I'm like, Oh boy, this is going to be a minute. Oh, look, there's an app image. Do I want to tango with this thing? Let's download the app image. Does it launch? Hey, look, it kind of, that's all I'm looking for in an app image. It's like the kind of work. Okay. I'll let, let, let's make you a real boy. Maybe I'll add a repo or just compile it myself. <laughs> But, you know, this is a feature freeze, and I just wanted to share this little bit of information with everyone. I'm like, hey, if you're looking to package something that you, what does it run on? What does, all of them, period. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> do I have to install uh, a, nope. Mm -hmm. What about, nope. What about, download it. CHMod plus X. Mm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was just happy to see that this is continually being updated, because AppImage is my favorite containerized format as well. And what I like to test new software with when it's available. So, and I love the fact that it's going to launch even faster because app images always launched faster than uh, snaps and flat packs. Even for the first time, they launched faster. Yeah, so, because really awesome. the containerization mm -hmm. is just the application and the exactly. dependencies that it needs. It doesn't yeah. come with its own sandbox and its own runtime and its own this and its own that. Calm down, Grandpa. Yeah. I'm getting off your line. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Grandpa, um, this next story comes courtesy of Arthur, and he dropped it into our show notes. Um, this is something yeah. old. It's old enough to where I recommend it. And, uh, well, this is based on something old, I should say. Because this is, what are we going to do? Pycom? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or yeah, Pycom. Pycom. It's I a think. four. I think. With both Tyrone 144s, dual. Yeah. I'm not even trying that. Um, that's some weeb words and GLX backend, but anti-laced rounded corners, man. Have you ever looked at your, um, desktop compositor and been like, man, those corners, oof, if they were only more rounded. I always deliberately <laughs> go for the themes that have the sharp corners I, because rounded corners uh, yeah. don't look very good. <laughs> if, if you genuinely like, um, like, man, what theme are you running in? And it's like, yes, uh, <laughs> That one, <laughs> dude, this, this is just kind of neat, man. Um, uh, cause I like to see additional work done on Compton. Compton's like genuinely the second thing I install after getting X up and running and it just works. Uh, there is points yep. to this. They're like, yo, check this out. Uh, we're going to refactor Compton. So this got that going for it. You know, it is forked from the original base and they want to make it maintainable to is, is Compton, Pedro, what do you think? Unmaintainable or abandoned because uh, it because it's been abandoned or because it's it's done? Because it still mm, works and it yeah. works ex exactly uh, as well as it did however many years ago that it stopped being supported. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it, it Compton, it worked very well. And it's one of those applications that you ask, what do you do? I composite. And the way it goes, mm -hmm. it, it does its thing. You can pick yeah. X render GLX. You can pick whether you want transparency or no transparency. That that that's it. Rounded corners, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice to have no. another, you know, a lightweight, <laughs> lightweight option, obviously. And actually, this can improve gaming import performance. <laughs> so, I just like that's always um, a thing. <laughs> this was uh, originally posted to do our Unix port and. and Oh, it's, unfortunately, I have it in the view of new Reddit, which I don't know how to use or understand. Mm -hmm. But I think the second comment on the initial post, this, that'll be in the show notes, is like, oh, great. Here I go, jacking up my config again. And perfectly, <laughs> perfectly functional Compton configuration. And um, yep. no, oh, let's go playing with that. Not broke, don't <laughs> fix. But if you need the 
I don't even think you need that, but it's using GLX back end out of the box. I don't know. This this that that is good. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know. Very much. <laughs> I I don't know. The Maybe. XFC developers could start to learn a little bit from that. Yeah. I, I was genuinely a little disappointed when I fired up um four fourteen that compositor. Oof. Oof. No. Uh. I, I did not have good times, good experiences with it. I am compositor free right now. We were talking about that for going live. Like nah. Just, just not bothering with it. You know what? I think I'll live without shadows. I think I will. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Jitsi News. Yeah, this is really cool. So I saw this uh, tweet a few days ago, and Jitsi tweeted, We just shipped massively improved Firefox support on meet.jitsi. Firefox, it's your turn now. Looking forward to your upcoming support for RTX and TCC. Oh, I just, I was really, really, really excited about this because we need Fire, Firefox to support WebRTC better and to work better. It's always been an is issue um, on Jitsi, even on Zoom. Um, anytime you're using WebRTC, Firefox uh, would sometimes crash and it, it wouldn't, it, it's working better these days, but it still wasn't there. And uh, this will will help, especially with us using Jitsi. Maybe we can start using Firefox now. <laughs> that would be um, awesome. <laughs> not as long as Firefox keeps putting that little stupid Annoyotron box at the top of the it, screen. And yeah, it's and for it, your own good. It, then. It's for it your does own hide. Good. It does hide. Yes. <laughs> does it hide? Own. Because I used I'm, it. Yeah. Uh, what was it on Monday when I was in that Portuguese podcast? Mm -hmm. I was using their thing through mm -hmm. Firefox and slapdash right there. It's like, can I get rid? Of no, no, no. Uh, I'm still okay. there for yeah. your safety. Well, I, I've had a situation on multi monitors where it, it's actually in the left hand corner of the of of the monitor on the left side, and you d I don't find it until later. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> so then I have it's to move it still over. there, and they, they've just <laughs> uh, the Mozilla Foundation is locked into like. That needs to be there. Why? It, it really doesn't. I, I get it. No. I, I get it, Mozilla. Yeah. It's a practical joke that's just gotten a little bit out of hand, but it's okay. <laughs> you can you can take it off, man. Yeah. One of the things that I also saw in that post was why not? Um, yeah, let, let's get RTX and WebRTC because reasons. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. I'm down with that. I could see it because you uh you can definitely do um, video encoding with the tensor cores, yes. so, but you could also do it with the CUDA cores too. Uh, good luck on mm -hmm. whenever that shows up. But hey, it is mentioned. It's a thing that could be worked on. Good mm -hmm. and Yay. better Jitsi support uh, for Firefox. I know that is something that has long been needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. good times, everyone. Pedro, this this just doesn't. I, this doesn't make any sense. All right. Actually, it makes perfect <laughs> this sense. This is awesome. Uh, this is QRCP, and uh, it's QR copy, like the CP command uh, that you would type into your favorite terminal emulator. And what this does is you pass a file or a folder uh, as an argument or a flag to that um, command, QRCP, and it generates a QR code mm -hmm. that you can scan with your phone or your tablet or anything that reads QR codes and knows what to do with them. And what it does is it goes to the little URL that shows up above the um, the QR code on the phone and goes, oh, that's a file. I'm just going to download it mm -hmm. from the terminal. No X mm -hmm. needed, no nothing. And you can just send an entire folder over the wi awesome. with just a QR <laughs> code. That that's kind of neat. That 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 was really. I mm -hmm. didn't know that was a thing that I wanted, but I do now. Got pictures. <laughs> you say it's kind of neat, and my brain meat says a different translation is that's ripe for abuse. <laughs> oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But then again, I'm sure. <laughs> so are most useful things like web browsers or Zoom. <laughs> well, I mean, wouldn't it be fun? I'm trying to think of like how many terabytes of storage I could put into like one folder to generate that QR code to send. I'm pretty sure phones go, mm. uh, we can't download that. That's too big. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there'll be a bug report you have to find. I'm like, um... <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I just tried to download a uh, hundred and something gigs to my phone. <laughs> Why? Because I was watching this podcast. And... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, what an ingenious way to use the terminal. I just thought this was awesome. Generating QR codes in the terminal to send files. That's just cool. <laughs> it's definitely different, man. It, um, <laughs> and it is kind of funny when you think about it, because there's just not a good way to get files from point A to point B mm -hmm. from your mobile, from your desktop. Yeah. It doesn't matter. This is not a limitation of Linux. It's just not there. And I know like everyone's yeah. going to be like, well, I have this one app that works. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I usually just like, if I have the mobile near and you have it to plug it in, okay. You know, but outside of that, what if say you're remoting onto your server and you want to get something out of that server mm -hmm. onto your phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Done magic. <laughs> it's, this I like because it seems more efficient than well. I'm just going to upload that to Google Drive and message myself so I can. <laughs> get them. There we go. <laughs> oh man, that's the thing. Yeah. So tell me about this uh, open source note taking and to do application with synchronization capabilities. Yeah, this is this is actually really cool. This is Joplin, and thank you for Strider of Lutris for the great recommendation on this. This is a free open source note taking and to do application, which helps you write and organize your notes and synchronize them between your devices. And I actually downloaded the app image for desktop, which works great, but it is also available for no mobile and awesome terminal. You can write the notes in your terminal and sync them. And it's really great because Joplin launches right into the welcome notes with instructions on using it. And it's very similar to using Evernote. And since the notes are actually in markdown format, there is great flexibility, especially for coders and developers. And you can import and export from many other note-taking apps, including Evernote and Simple Note. And a great feature of Joplin, which I've been using a lot since I started using it this week, is being able to launch notes in your favorite text editor, such as gedit, with the edit and external editor command. And it's just a really flexible note-taking app. It's one of the best ones out there. And it has a lot of features that that even Evernote um, doesn't, so um, does. So it's really, really amazing and flexible and it works on all the things <laughs> you know breaking the, <laughs> the whole note sync away from centralized google microsoft <laughs> apple evernote etc ecosystem uh, those kinds of uh, ecosystems very yeah. lofty goal that mm -hmm. kudos major kudos yeah. for that <laughs> but i'm gonna have to call xkcd 927 here um because I'm not entirely sure creating yet another service which needs to rely on the th on Live either a, a third party like google or microsoft or whatever or people deploying mm -hmm. their own synchronization server i'm not entirely sure that's the way to do it i don't know man i, I gotta say my favorite thing um about this project is the talk about custom css mm -hmm. followed by um this on <laughs> that just kind of runs off. No. Um, uh, all right. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Custom CSS. The formatting indeed. doesn't like all that yeah. zooming in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, do you want to start some trouble? You're stuck at home and you got to be on a Zoom meeting. You got to be on a Skype call. You want to be on Jitsi and you find that you got a video card that, you know, something like an old 1080 Ti laying around and that you can probably get about 30, 33 FERPs with. You want to mess with people because that's what you do when you get bored. You cause chaos and mayhem. Or that might just be me, but be more like Vin. Um, <laughs> avatars for Zoom and Skype, man. This is Avatarify. Yeah, let's go with yeah. that, man. Avatarify. <laughs> so you can basically take some pictures, stick it, well, a picture, stick it together, uh, create a virtual webcam, and have some fun with it i do believe uh, this is a video that uh drew some attention this was elon musk joined our zoom call <laughs> really um, well done <laughs> that, that's pretty much out of the box so when you're watching the video version um th these are like two Deep people do, yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't think of that real time does this uh actually pop off that they're flipping out <laughs> and i'm like oh my gosh elon musk um <laughs> 
<laughs> it wasn't. It was his avatar. But think about the fun you can get up to with yeah. this. Like, yeah. Fun. Avatar bombing on Zoom now. Not that they don't have enough problems, but... <laughs> It's available for <laughs> Linux, Mac, Windows. Um, it works with Skype, Zoom, so basically anything that'll take it's a... It's uh, V4L2. It works exactly. with everything that accepts a video device. The <laughs> requirements, you're going to be looking at getting about 33... Yeah, 33 FIRPs with a 1080 Ti, 15 with a 1070. Uh, Mac OS, just no, don't, don't one. Yeah, <laughs> minus one. Yeah, I guess that uh, integrated um, Intel GPU on Mac... It ain't doing so good. <laughs> this th this is uh, interesting. So we need to try this out, Pedro. I want to try to see if we can use it with like a picture of um, a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I want Pedro shoe hybrid in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it does the whole um, deep fake thing where it tries to match the eyes with the eyes and the mouth with the mouth if it sees them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it not working terribly well with just like a shoe. <laughs> Would it work with a microphone? There's eyes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the resource overhead um, and implementation, that might nightmare fuel FPS. may show up. Sorry, <laughs> who knows? That amalgam. Uh, that would be awesome. Amalgam, um, nope. <laughs> hey, beautiful people. Uh, <clears throat> If you like what we do, we do it every Wednesday. Come check us out. Spread the show. Um, I know a lot of people like sharing on Twitter and stuff like that. That's awesome. That's a great way to support what we do. Um, plus all the beautiful people who support us financially on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a gang of ways to do that. Uh, we have Patreon. We have Libra Pay. We got merch. Buy our stuff. Uh, PayPal. We got Wish Zones. And of course, Magic Internet Money. <laughs> If you're curious about anything in the studio, we have misappropriated the Amazon <laughs> influencer program, and I've just listed everything in the studio, up to and including the desk I just bought that I actually recommend. And uh, that can be helpful. I find that helpful when somebody's like, what's that thing? Shopping guy. <laughs> right. And I'm not saying buy it through Amazon. I'm just going to go buy it on eBay used because that's probably what I did in the first place. That's kind of cool. Uh, we do have a returning patron this week, Jill. Yeah, Lennox Gennaro. He's now a sea monster. He's a sea and, monster. And, What's a sea monster? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the, the the third highest tier tier of our patronage. So that's that's really awesome. <laughs> patronage. As a patron, we like to kick you a couple extra rewards. You get access to the uncut episodes, which is an extra podcast. There's like a full Saturday's the good deal because that's like if you need four hours of something to listen to on oh, Monday yeah. or Sunday <laughs> afternoon, there it is. Just shenanigans and it's the entire thing. Plus, we got the pre pre super shows, in, which is our um, weekly production meeting for everything behind the scenes. And uh, we have live audio available on Discord along with the creep shows. And speaking of Discord, Pedro, we have a Discord. I just figured that out. <laughs> we do. And uh, Linux Nuru, uh, it's good that you're back because you've been our reigning champion over on our Discord. Mm. Chatty, chatty Linux Nuru. So, yes. Thank you. Yay. Thank you very, very much. That's all it was, man. He's like, oh. <laughs> it's like, I need my fix. Give me my Discord. <laughs> we are in yeah. our Discord the other six days of the week. If you want to stop by, yes. say hi. We have IRC. We've always, we will always have IRC, and that's bridged together. So. Yeah, if you're talking on Twitch, Twitch or IRC or Discord, mm -hmm. we can um, synchronize. And uh, we want you to come play with us. Giggity. Friday, um, we are going through Wolfenstein. Coop, returning. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. We killed the big baddie and we're now in the forest, mm -hmm. which is weird. Which is the furthest yes. I've ever been in this near 20-year-old game. So Same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we will... Uh, I'll do the announcement on that uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, just check out the announcements tab in Discord. And I think we can have up to eight people in there. So if you want to come by, stop or come by and nice. say hi while we're streaming. And that'll go down at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And I think I, I still got to render it out. I have the 2020 update studio thing of like how we do everything, how we're doing NetJack and how all audio stuff, plugins and video, black magic stuff. Literal black magic stuff is stuck together. I'll put that out for patrons. Uh, 
Probably also this Friday because that's a big render job. I hit mm-hmm. render on that the other night. I'm like, ooh, that that's an overnight. Um, that's going to take a minute. Wow. Cool. So mm-hmm. let's talk about itsy bitsy teedy weedy. Um, pumpkin pie, not Happy made of zucchini. Pie day. Oh, landed it. <laughs> landed it. Pie made this of is, zucchini. I guess I uh, <laughs> I tried. this is awesome. <laughs> Oh, this is actually probably one of my favorite Raspberry Pi devices now. Uh, the Turing Pi Cluster Board. This turns up to seven Raspberry Pi compute modules into a power, powerful cluster device that you can use as a NAS for artificial intelligence, for cloud infrastructure, for gaming, or whatever computing task you desire. And I think it's cool because you can have, this is like having your very own mini Beowulf cluster (laughs) running seven Raspberry Pi compute modules. And it's going to cost only $189, which is really good. That's not counting the the pies, of course. You still need to buy the the compute module separately. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And it will fit in a standard mini ITX case. So that's 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 the big one. That's the big one right there. Mini ITX form factor. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> uh, the baseboard that, uh, that you buy, the uh, Turing Pi, it's uh, it's even got HDMI. Uh, it There's two versions that I can see. One has a 24-pin um, uh, ATX connector. The other one has an external 12-volt uh, DC. So that 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 looks interesting. That yeah. That... <laughs> Not a hundred and ninety dollars, uh, interesting for me, but I can see a lot of people to which it's like, oh, I can run seven Raspberry Pis off of one mini ITX it board. Is. It's like, I mean, excuse this, me, this is not <laughs> the breaking news yeah. for this. What is? It's now available for pre-order. It has a price tag on it. It's yeah. no longer like, hey, we're thinking about making this thing. Like, no, this thing's real. You want to buy one? I'm like, not really. I'm like, yo, yep. mm-hmm. I, I. Uh, yeah, if you if you need one of these, you need one of these, you know. Yeah. There's no like, <laughs> oh, that's neat. Maybe I'll play with you. Like, oh, that'd be awesome. And that's cool. I mean, mm, Kubernetes, man. That's what you need. The Kubernetes yeah. pie cluster. <laughs> All in the size of the sheet of an A4 paper. Mm. Yes, <laughs> very true. <laughs> so this this. Mm-hmm. This, this ah, is making teeny, me think about spending some money, Pedro. <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah, God, well, uh, we don't have any information on pricing yet, so no. that could be <laughs> the yay or nay. But what you're looking that, uh, at that is a stumpy little cuboid-shaped box from uh, Chuvi. Uh, they are a uh, Chinese uh, computer manufacturer. They also have, uh, they make tablets and phones, uh, but they're coming up mm-hmm. with uh, an x86, six centimeter by six centimeter, that's about four centimeters tall, uh, little cuboid thingy. And yeah, it's got a Celeron in it. It uh, supports, I think they said it was uh, up to four gigs of RAM. No, six gigs of RAM. Six gigs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and a quad core uh, Celeron N4100. Which, to be fair, is an older chip, but quad core. So that that'll drive some things. Uh, and yeah, no, that is tiny. That is smaller than a nook. It's like six centimeters. Forty-three millimeters by sixty-one by six. It's a baby little board cube. It's so yeah, terrible. it's it's, it's so a tiny cute. thing. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, no, uh, the price is going to be the thing that dictates whether or not this is, ooh, pickup or, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no. <laughs> this man Aww. it's got the usb ports uh, hdmi and yeah the, the thing that threw me a bit sideways was active cooling yep mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. they call it the lark box lark. It's yeah. a lark. <laughs> the lark it's a lark <laughs> oh that's good well, this this is like a mini next cube it's so cute just put window maker on there for a little mini mini next cube experience Oh man! <laughs> then it really would be overpriced and useless. Uh, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> but cute, so cute. That's kind of neat, man. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm a huge fan. It depends. For me, it's all about the construction quality and how resilient it is after you've launched it. Somebody getting on your nerves. 
mm-hmm. and whether or not I can <laughs> does it, it back still up. work after you crack someone's skull with it? Pretty much, <laughs> you know. That, that's yeah. what I look for. That, that's the only thing that, like, ooh, active cooling. I don't know, but I'm hundred percent with you on pay, uh, Pedro's. It's all about the price mm-hmm. because if you give me because something, yeah. Dude. The form factor is really neat. <laughs> form yeah, factor is brilliant. It's I like it. And I feel like, oh, what, 70 quid. Like, yeah. <laughs> Up to 100 pounds. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Well, absolutely. I, I would pause for a, a probably still I'm just picking up to play with. But yeah, anything under 100, you're just like, I'm just going to pick one up. Why? I don't know. Yep. Just yeah. put it on my desk, man. And if it has vase amounts, because usually these teeny tiny computers have like the, uh, the yeah. screw holes on the bottom, mm-hmm. line up with vase amounts so you can just done. Pedro, that, all computers yeah. that small have vase amounts. It's called tape and zip ties. Yeah, <laughs> Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> the SSD approach. I, I get it. <laughs> I, I, man, I, I, I don't even use that. It just kind of fits between where the hard drive was. It's like, there we go. <laughs> It can dangle. That's fine. <laughs> it can dangle. It bounces around. That, that's an SSD <laughs> mount. Then. Tell us about your pies and your SSD mounts and uh, yeah. all that. We want your information. We want, yeah, we want your, that doesn't sound creepy, but yeah, we totally do. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what we do with it. Uh, no, but scream in our direction. You can leave a comment on YouTube and all that. No guaranteed. But but we, we have cleverly disguised a button on our web zone that will allow all of us to get a message that you send and maybe we can talk about it on the show that could very well happen maybe it's uh, even labeled mm-hmm. contact if you go to <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah no it, it it is the best way to get in touch with us and um, you should uh, read the uh, disclaimers at the top hopefully those won't put you off because if you're just sharing something like you um yeah, it's a, a really funny SSD mount that you have going on in your home PC right now. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's up on the wall. Take a picture of it. Send it to us. If you make me laugh, I'll give you a game key. Laugh. How's that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. Let us know. <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. Uh, we do have one from our long suffering Windows <laughs> using pal. Oh, Cameron, I'm sorry. Earl. <laughs> hey, man, he writes, yo, AMD Master Race. So, look at that, who? We have Intel on the ropes. You guys, Intel shilling days are over. <laughs> hey, children, are you? Never mind. Um, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, next step is to destroy NVIDIA, because you guys are still NVIDIA shills. I haven't messaged you guys in months. And this is the dribble that comes to mind. Yeah, it's repetitive dribble. See, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. You used to be clever about your insults, Cameron. Well, this is prolonged. <laughs> you see, Cameron at one point um, was Linux curious and his you know, composition and um, writing abilities and trolling abilities were greatly enhanced, you know, with increased. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he since went back to Windows, and you've seen what long-term exposure to Microsoft has resulted in. It's barely coherent. <laughs> it's quite sad. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Earl, I have actually been running an AMD RX 580 <laughs> GPU on my main gaming and broadcasting rig and love it. I've been doing that what for about six months What processor do you have now. there, Jill? Yeah, but I have an Intel uh, quad-core fifth-gen processor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And now, but Vin, um, see, Vin has an it has an AMD thread booper, but it's running on an Intel board. So, have you gone? How dumb? do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> that makes no sense. How do you have uh, LGA board? What LGA? No, it's not how thread rippers Just work. because the pins uh, doesn't yeah. make it in. Uh? Well, LGAs are manufactured by Intel mm. <laughs> motherboards. <laughs> yeah, that's not something I'd want to double down on, Jill. Um, hey, yeah, <laughs> we got to bounce LGA out of here, beautiful is people. Manufactured by- and uh, we will uh, check you out <laughs> next week. Sometimes you got to save people from themselves. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. All right. Let's roll some credits. Maybe. Let's try it. Uh, they're. What? Was I the only one who heard of that? Maybe I was the only one who heard of that. (laughs) 
I don't know, maybe <laughs> that tumor has finally popped and my brain's going, nope, <laughs> we're out. <laughs> uh, Linux Gunneru, thank you so much. Thank you so much for upping your your subscription. <laughs> we love you. Thank you to our producers. One of our producers. longest running um, <laughs> viewers, listeners, fans, whatever you want to call them. Insult them while I'm at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, most of my motherboards that are LGA are made by Intel, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I told you not to double down on it. Let it go, Jill.